The workday starts early at the Ardosky Flower Farms near Blanco, Texas. Before sun sets, thousands of hand-picked bouquets will celebrate occasions or simply liven up homes with the fresh scent of Texas specially cut flowers. You can thank Pamela and Frank Arnosky, who in 1990 ventured into a rocky business on formerly cedar-studded land, built their house, and started a farm. I came down to Texas A&M to study peach breeding uh, with the A&M program. And then I left there and, and took a job at Ellison's Nursery in Brenham and learned how to grow poinsettias. So I, I got into the bedding plant business and Pamela and I met. I went to Texas A&M to study geography and I specialized later in plant geography. Plant geography is studying how plants got to where they are and why they're in that particular place. Some good friends moved out here to the hill country and they said there's some land across the road for sale and it's owner financed and we had a thousand dollars, about all we had to our name and um, we were able to put a thousand dollars down and move on to a, a cedar choked piece of property and got in, pitched a tent and started working from the inside out. Built this greenhouse um, made $25,000 gross the first year and lived on $9,000 of it with two kids and um, didn't have enough money to run electricity or hot water to the house so we had an extension cord from the greenhouse and we had our bathtub and washing machine in here. We were having babies and it's really hard to be a worker in the greenhouse every day if you've got little kids that are calling to you from the house and so by the second year here Frank and I cooked up this idea that he would plow up the front bed in front of our house, it was about a quarter of an acre, and we would put cut flowers there and we would cut them and take them into Austin and uh, try to sell them. Within a year, we had totally left the bedding plant business and gone into cut flowers. This was 1993. From that quarter acre, we expanded up to at one point 40 acres of cut flowers. We were just running for all we could, so we scaled back intentionally during the drought. Right now, this level that we're at with you know four to six employees and ourselves 20 acres and cut flowers is pretty much a good a good fit. We do at least 1200 bouquets a week sometimes closer to 1500 a week of the mixed bouquets and then I personally work on another table with another setup and I'll make a thousand bunches um, during the week also. Every single flower that leaves this farm has been touched by either Pamela or myself at some point. When you're buying local flowers they are cut today and sold tomorrow, they're going to be super fresh and have this long base life. Central Market was willing to take all the Texas flowers that we could bring them. I would go be going through the wine section and through the bulk section and people would stop me and say, oh my God, these are beautiful. Where did you get these? And you say, well, we grow them out in the hill country. You're kidding. And they would follow me to the floral department and start buying them out of the buckets before we could even unload them into the display. And it's that kind of feedback that really makes you realize it, it's all worth it, you know, for all the hailstorms and tornadoes and ice storms and everything else that we've been through. It's about the connection with the grower. So designing with product that you know where it comes from and you know the people who grow it just um, emphasizes that connection and it kind of brings it all home. American Grown was established in 2014 by a coalition of flower farmers who uh, decided that it was time to find a way to communicate to consumers about the flowers they're buying and the origin they're from. Uh, today, 74% of consumers have no idea where flowers come from, yet 58% of them would prefer to buy more American. One of the things we do call it is the field to vase movement, very similarly, you know, uh, paralleling food, which is farm to table. Around the country, field to vase dinner parties showcase local flower and food farmers, along with vintners and craft beer brewers. In May 2016, AGB Bloom's floral designers and Austin chefs brought together seasonal slow food and slow flowers at the Orlowski Flower Farms. When guests arrived in early evening, Hill Country Elegance greeted them. There's this romance to being in a flower field that is priceless. The food is great, but it's really about the flowers. Presentation is really about bringing the outside in. So we took an element like the fence posts that you would see throughout Texas and recreated that on the table. The first cut flower farms in Texas actually go back to the early part of the 20th century. When you start looking at the uh, old USDA records for production, there were hundreds of acres of production, particularly south of San Antonio. But then when, when production could be shipped in refrigerated trucks and refrigerated rail cars, it kind of shifted to the west coast. Now, Texas flower farms are booming, in part thanks to the Arnosky's encouragement. 
It's hard work in the hill country where drought, destructive floods, and grasshoppers come with the job. It's farming just like if we were raising corn or cotton or cattle. We face the same challenges, the same things with markets, the same things with weather. Every day I wake up and hope it's not going to be a hailstorm and hope for good weather and hope for a little rain and not too much. The other thing about farming is that really what it is is repetition. And you have to be good at being able to free your mind up after you've figured out a system so that we can do repetitive tasks over and over and not get bored and do them excellently every time. It's like a production line here of 30,000 seeds being planted, 30,000 plants going in the field. As soon as a flower bed is done with production, we immediately mow it down, plow in all the mulch back into the bed with a rototiller, and um, try and replant within the same week. So we can get four, four cycles of production in a year. As soon as the sunflowers are done, we'll rotate those out and put in marigolds. And the marigolds are done, we'll rotate that out and put celosias. So, and then when celosias are done in the fall with the frost, we come in and we plant an overwintering annual like Larkspur. We have to really be careful what we can grow in the summer because very few things will actually take the, the heat just day after day, month after month that we get here in Texas. Coxcomb celosia, the hotter it gets, the better it grows. It loves it at 100 degrees. Gomfrina loves the heat. For us to grow sunflowers as a cut flower crop here in Texas is just the most natural thing because Texas is where that plant evolved and spread to the rest of North America. We do a huge amount of marigolds for late October because the Dia de los Muertos has become a really big celebration. In the morning, we have to pick some things that are very delicate, like black-eyed Susans that seem to wilt if we pick them in the rest of the day. And the converse of that is yarrow, the Achillea, can't be picked until sundown. If you pick it early in the morning, even when it's cool, the yarrow will wilt. We can't make it stop. But if you pick it the very last thing before the sun goes down, put it directly in the cooler the next day, it will hold up. The other thing you have to look at is, is what stage do you cut the flowers at? And dahlias have to be cut when they're almost fully open because they don't open very well once you've cut them. Um, other flowers like zinnias or marigolds, you can cut at any stage, they'll continue to open. And some flowers like these lilies here, they actually have to be cut when they're very tight in the bud stage because the flowers will open up and be very delicate. So you have to ship them when they're still tight. And these will all open up in the vase as opposed to a dahlia, which will finish. It, it won't open much more than when you got it. At first, Pamela headed into farmer's markets weekly. And then we discovered that people would come out and pick up flowers on a self-serve basis. So we left a little cash box and she would leave flowers out there. Saturdays, though, Pamela is down there. She's running uh, a farmer's market yeah, herself. Saturday mornings, I'm in the barn from 9 a.m. till noon. Special orders sometimes pick up brides who want to use local flowers, come and talk to me there. Gary Weeks, renowned furniture builder in Wimberley, designed the blue barn based on historic hill country German halls, just made for dancing. Hundreds of neighbors joined in for the traditional barn raising. And our local dentist, Doug Pouts, was here every minute. He wanted to be the guy who scrambled on top of the roof putting on the ridge beam, the, what do you call it? The ridge cap. The ridge cap on the last thing, and so he was there. Nobody fought him for that job, he could have it. No way. <laughs> In a world of online buying, personal relationships close to home matter even more. We think that's really important for people to understand where their flowers come from and to understand that when you're supporting locally grown flowers, you're supporting farmers and you're supporting the community. It's really a choice to say, I want to keep my flowers close to me, and in doing so, I'm supporting a family farm like the Arnoskis. I think what we find in coming to Texas is a, a community of people who love to buy local, support local. And we're always up for a new adventure. And if we're bored in the field doing something, or it's 112, and you think, oh God, I just can't take this any longer. If one person comes up with a new marketing idea, we are off to the races and we forget how miserable we were and, and get all excited about it, something new.